Atlanta falls to 4-4. Four and four. They lose in Tennessee against the Will Levis-led Titans. And this, long, this loss stings, right? I mean, you're playing a rookie QB making his NFL debut, and he looked like Tom Brady out there throwing for four touchdowns. Him and DeAndre Hopkins were an unstoppable duo, and the Falcons are going to have some soul-searching to do offensively and defensively before they go home and play the Minnesota Vikings. But the big storyline coming out of this loss was Desmond Ritter, who was evaluated for a concussion, never returned to the game, cleared concussion protocol. Arthur Smith decided to err on the side of caution, and they went with Taylor Heineke, who finished the day 12 for 21, 175 yards and one touchdown, and honestly just looked a lot better than Desmond Ritter did in the first half, who was sacked five times, another turnover. He's had 13 turnovers so far. It's only week eight. Like, think about that. Every single time he steps on the field, Atlanta should just go, we're going to receive the opening kickoff. Actually, we don't want to receive it. We're just going to kick it twice because we always spot the team a turnover every single game with Desmond Ritter. So a big question for Arthur Smith moving forward is whether or not Desmond Ritter will be this team's starting quarterback. I enter the season thinking I'm going to be optimistic. I want to be hopeful for DR9. But truth be told, no, I don't have very high expectations, and I'm not a big Desmond Ritter believer. And then the last couple of weeks, I saw him throw the ball well. I saw him make accurate passes. I saw him bounce back from turnovers. And I saw him lead some game-winning drives, right? Well, unfortunately, if you keep turning the ball over, none of that matters. Like, Desmond Ritter might be one of the best for, you know, quarterbacks for throwing for 300 yards, but if you turn it over every single time you step on the field, what does it matter? It's all for nothing. So a lot of decision-making has to be made in Flowery Branch this upcoming week before the Minnesota Vikings, without Kirk Cousins, who unfortunately suffered an Achilles injury, come to town as Atlanta tries to get back above 500 and get to 5-4. and four. But the overall offensive performance this week, not good. Like, Success on the ground-ish, right? Averaging 5.4 yards a carry. A decent balance between Algier and Bijan Robinson. But the one fumble came at a bad spot, of course. And 342, 342 total yards of offense was no match for what Tennessee was doing. Like, look at the Titans' offense against Atlanta's defense. 375 yards. Will Levis, 226 passing yards. 19 for 29. 149 yards on the ground and only one turnover for Tennessee. So it was a day where it felt like Atlanta's defense had put so much energy into the last couple of weeks. They needed a bit of a breather, right? They needed the offense to maybe pick up the slack a little bit and help pull off a 31-28 win or something like that. Instead, they stall out at the end, turnover on downs, looking for Van Jefferson, and the Falcons fall to 4-4 four and four on the season. Now, as for who should be the starting quarterback next week, I think you have a hard decision not to go with Taylor Heineke. Like, I told you guys before the season started, Taylor Heineke is the reincarnation of Ryan Fitzpatrick. You don't want him to start the year for you, but come in midseason, he's going to bring some magic with him. And if I'm Arthur Smith right now, I'm thinking long and hard about rolling with Desmond or with Taylor Heineke, but I do think ultimately they are going to go with Desmond Ritter. Now, I'll give you my reasoning in just a moment, but today's show is being supported by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports app where all you have to do is pick more or less for two to six player stat projections, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Now, you can see my projections for Sunday Night Football Bears Chargers, which is currently being played. And I've got the more on Tyson Bajan at 203.5 passing yards, less for Austin Eckler, and he just ran in for a touchdown. So not great for the less on Austin Eckler, real time, 31.5. That's a bad miss by me, it looks like. But I like the more for DJ Moore at 58.5 yards. Listen, be smarter than me and go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. The link for that is in the comments and description of today's video. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. I cannot believe, as I said, the less for Taylor he for um, Austin Eckler, he received a pass and ran it for a touchdown. Uh, Taylor Heineke, 12 for 21, 175 yards, one touchdown. 
He made just as many good throws, tight window kind of throws we see from Desmond Ritter, and he did a better job of protecting the football, I would say. Like, the accuracy probably wasn't as great as we wanted it to be, 12 for 21, but Desmond Ritter, once again, running into sack after sack, the offensive line definitely not pulling their weight, but every time he takes contact, it's a fumble. I mean, he's got butterfingers. I think he's Brucey. He kind of looks like Brucey, too, from Longest Yard. If I knew I should have that popcorn, he's Brucey. This, oh my God, I can't believe I just figured it out. Desmond Ritter is Brucey from the longest yard. That's the Atlanta Falcons starting quarterback. Sucks to see. Bijan finally got that first rushing touchdown. That was awesome to see. 11 carries for 62 yards. And um, how about Kadeo Hodge having a ball game, right? Three grabs, 75 yards. Drake London, who had five receptions for 55 yards. He had a groin injury in the second half. He said to the media after the game that he'll be fine, but ultimately they erred on the side of caution. So not having Drake London out there definitely took the wind out of the sails. But let's take 30 seconds here and talk about when Arthur Smith has an opportunity to have Kyle Pitts, Drake London, and B. John Robinson be a part of some scheme play. He goes, you know what will be even better? John U. Smith passing to Michael Pruitt. I understand that you want the element of surprise, and the defense doesn't expect that when those two guys are on the field. But maybe have, I don't know, Kyle Pitts, the high, highest dra drafted tight end ever, not be blocking for your second and third string tight ends. Just some food for thought, Art. But who should start next week, Ritter or Heineke? I think ultimately they're going to roll with Desmond Ritter. I, I just think that this team believes that the offense can move the ball well with Desmond Ritter. It's the turnovers that are killing them. And if they think they can fix the turnovers, well, that's a really small little hole that can be plugged up. But if they can't stop the turnovers, that hole is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's more water coming through. And they can't keep afloat for 17 games with 13 turnovers by Desmond Ritter through nine games so far. Eight games so far, actually. Four and four. So who do you think should start next week? Desmond Ritter or Taylor Heineke? I kind of want to say Ritter because part of me feels like once you turn to Heineke, there's no going back. You can't put the genie back in the bottle, and it'll be tough to have a QB controversy change midway through the year if Heineke doesn't pan out well. So I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but maybe Desmond Ritter, if, you, if Arthur Smith believes the turnovers can be corrected, otherwise it's Taylor Heineke season, baby. Uh, Will Levis. 19 for 29, 238 yards, four touchdowns. Not a good look when you make a rookie QB look like Tom Brady in his NFL debut. Derrick Henry, by the way, I don't know if Tennessee's going to hold on to him or trade him by Tuesday, but he popped off, right? 22 carries for 101 yards. And then DeAndre Hopkins, I'm going to put a bit of an asterisk here because that first touchdown was clear and obvious offensive pass interference. And you want to know how I know that? Go back and rewatch the touchdown by, by D Hop. If AJ Terrell and Hopkins were wearing different jerseys, and that was an interception by AJ Terrell, there would be flags all over the field of defensive pass interference. He spinned them around. But because an offensive player, oh, he's fighting through contact. No, that was a bad miss by the officials that you could argue kind of cost Atlanta the game. Like, they lost by a touchdown, lost by five points. Like, that would have been a difference maker. But it happened so early in the game, you got to bounce back from it, and you can't let Will Levis spray the ball all over the field like that. So a lot to work on offensively for Atlanta. Well, first got to figure out who their starting quarterback is this week, and then go from there. And defensively, I'm not going to panic too much. Maybe they ran into the next Tom Brady. Like Maybe Will Levis is going to be – maybe he's him. I don't know. He was not, he was not good at Kentucky – I never believed in Will Levis, and he made me eat my words, and they kept going to his family every other snap, which was just so hard to watch it's play after play. But defensively, they got their you know teeth knocked in on the road and probably overlooked a rookie QB making a start a little bit. They were undefeated against rookie QBs up until that point this season, but lucky for them, they're 500. They have the Vikings coming to town this week without Kirk Cousins. A good opportunity to bounce back and get back on track.
That's going to do it for us on today's show. If you enjoyed our recap today, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're going to keep you guys informed and entertained for all things Atlanta Falcons going into the NFL trade deadline. Thank you.